Hello dear student, my name is Mr. Akhile Shugle and I am assistant professor in department of applied physics in G. H. Raisuni Academy of Engineering and Technology Nagpur. So, as I told you I belong to the physics department, so I will be teaching you physics rather in this year you will be learning applied physics. So, what is basically the difference between the pure physics or rather basic physics or fundamental physics and the applied physics. So, pure physics it, the word physics comes from the Greek word physis f u s i s physis means nature the equivalent Sanskrit word for this is Bhautiki, Bhautiki also means the natural or physical world. So, it means that physics is the branch of science which deals with the study of natural phenomena or the physical properties of the matter. It means it is the basic of all the science. So, basically what is physics or pure physics that you must have studied up to 10th and 12th and 11th and 12th. So, up to previous classes you have studied physics which can be termed as a pure physics or fundamental physics. So, in that we generally study the basic laws, the basic phenomena that occurs in nature. So, certain uh, phenomena when occur in the nature what is the basic laws behind that, what laws governs that phenomenon. So, all that has been studied under the fundamental physics like uh, in 11th and 12th in last 2 years you might have studied kinematics, you might have studied kinetic theory of gases, you might have studied the rigid bodies and their kinematics, then also the oscillations, vibrations, thermodynamics the most important, then the electrostatics that is the uh, static electricity due to the charges electric charges, then the current electricity that is the effect of moving charges and then the magnetic effect of electric current that the charges when move they lead to the magnetic effect or rather magnetic field. Then magnetism as a pure property of the materials, then electromagnetism, then optics a branch of physics which deals with the study of light. Then you must have studied the modern physics in which you study the dual nature of the radiation, then atomic physics, nuclear physics the most important again is the semiconductor physics. Okay. So, all these you have studied the basic concepts regarding all this and this touch almost almost all the topics that covers under the physics. So, now this year you are going to study applied physics. So, what is the applied physics? So, the applied physics is intended for the practical use of this particular concepts. So, the concept that you have studied at the 12th, 11th level fundamental levels. Now, they are having many more practical ap applications. So, in particularly applied physics you will be learning such a practical applications of that particular phenomenons or particular concepts. So, in applied physics particularly we are talking about this RTM Nagpur University Nagpur. Applied physics has been divided into two semesters. Semester 1 it will be called as engineering physics in which you will be studying 4 units and in second semester you will be learning advanced physics again it contains also 4 units. Okay. So, first we will talk about the engineering physics that in semester 1. So, you will be first learning engineering physics. So, I told you it consists of 4 units. So, which are they? The first unit is quantum mechanics, the second unit is wave packet and wave equation, the third is the crystal structure and the last one is semiconductor physics. While that in advanced physics in second semester you will be learning laser and wave optics. Then uh, second unit that is electron ballistics and the third unit that is electron optics and the fourth one is optical fiber and nano science. So, as you see in advanced physics as I told you there are some advanced topics involved which will be having advanced applications like say I said uh, lasers there are advanced applications and like uh, nano science recently the huge research is going on in this field and then optical fiber obviously. So, which is uh, used mainly for communication or faster communication and safer communication. So, engineering physics we are talking with 
it consists of four units as I told you. So, let us go for these four units. So, as I told you the unit 1, the first unit is quantum mechanics. quantum mechanics. So, what you are going to study in this particularly? So, today I will just introduce you what you are going to learn in all four units starting with quantum mechanics. So, in quantum mechanics what you are going to study? So, definitely you are going to study the quantum nature of the radiation. Now, what is quantum nature of radiation? So, this term it has been introduced in 1900 by Max Planck. So, initially all you know that the radiation it was considered to be only the wave, but later on few phenomenons they lead that the phenomenons cannot be explained on the basis of wave nature only. So, you need to develop some more concept and here the birth of quantum mechanics took place in 1900. So, we will be learning what is photon how the classical theory explain or sorry fold, uh, failed to explain certain phenomenons like photoelectric effect like uh, black body radiations and many more and how quantum mechanics successfully explain all these phenomenons and then we came to the dual nature. So, this will be studied in this chapter and then in second that is wave packet wave packet and wave equation, wave packet and wave equation. So, now what in chapter 1 you will come to learn or you come to know that the matter possesses dual nature and then how that dual nature will be means the when the particle moves it consists of or it also has associated with the waves then how is the wave associated with that particle? Then we will come to know that that wave is in the form of wave packet and then this wave packet if it is moving it is rather not like a particle, but moreover like will be like a wave. So, if it is a wave then then classical equations of motion will not be applicable there in quantum mechanics. So, you need certain equations to explain all these things and that was done by Schrodinger. So, there are Schrodinger's two equations, Schrodinger's time dependent equation and Schrodinger's time independent equation. So, we are going to learn both and their applications also how it is used to develop further science of quantum. Then the third unit is crystal structure, crystal structure. Now, what is crystal structure? So, you must be knowing that the many physical or chemical properties of the particular materials they depends on the crystal structure of its atoms and molecules, how they are arranged and how they give the strength to the particular materials and all that. So, now we in this chapter will be studying how the atoms are arranged in that particular crystal and the concept of uh, crystal like lattice, then basis and then how it leads to the crystal structure. Then Bragg's law that is for x-ray diffraction. So, x-ray diffraction it is very useful in revealing the structure of the materials and here we will be studying 7 crystal system and obviously the 14 Bravais lattices and in last is Miller indices how the planes in the crystal can be named according to the Miller. And the last one is fourth unit that is semiconductor physics, semiconductor physics, semiconductor physics. So, you might have studied this topic particularly semiconductor physics in the previous class also. It includes the science of semiconductor materials the commonly used semiconductor materials are germanium and silicon you start with they are tetravalent and then definitely their physics and definitely their applications like the devices semiconductor devices which are nonlinear or we can say non ohmic like diodes transistors their applications and their uses so these four chapters we will be having in this first 
semester. In second semester what you will be having? So, in second semester the first unit is laser and wave optics. What is laser? As you can see, this is a collection of the words. Basically, it is an acronym and it stands for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. So, laser is not an ordinary light, rather it differs from the ordinary light in many ways. The first is the coherence, very important. That laser is a light, no doubt, but it is very strong. Even by using laser, you can either cut the metal or you can drill the metal, you can weld the metal. So, what makes it so strong? Basically, it is a light, then this is also a light. Many light in daylight and tube lights or fluorescent lights we observe, but they are not so strong. So, what makes laser strong? So, that you need to study in this unit that is called laser. So, the concept of coherence, then how that coherence can be obtained, that can be studied in this particular laser. So, next is wave optics. So, what is wave optics? So, what is optics basically? You all know what is optics? So, optics is a branch of physics which deals with the study of phenomena related with light. Which phenomena which are related with light? Interference, reflection, refraction, polarization, dispersion, diffraction, scattering, etcetera. So, what you are going to study out of these all phenomena in this chapter? So, basically in this chapter we are only going to study the interference phenomenon. So, wave optics here will be the optics or branch of physics which will be dealing with this phenomenon like interference of light by considering light as a wave that is why it is aimed as wave optics because light can be considered as a ray also and ray optics like lenses and all that you have already studied. So, wave optics you need to consider light as a wave that we all know. So, light is a wave electromagnetic wave. So, by considering light to be a wave we need to move further in wave optics. So, phenomenon of interference. So, you know all what is the necessary condition for interference that the light sources or two light rays must be coherent. Now, how to get that light waves coherent? One of the way you have already studied at 12th class that is Young's double slit experiment. What Young did? He took a monochromatic source of light and that light was placed in front of a cardboard. So, cardboard blocked all the light, then there were two pin holes which were at equal distance from the monochromatic source. So, what from the outside? You got two sources that pin holes which will be emitting same light of same amplitude, same frequency or same wavelength. That means, the two sources are coherent. So, this is the way of obtaining coherent sources by division of wavefront. And then these two light sources will lead to interference phenomenon and you will get alternate bright and dark band that you all study. Now, what you are going to study in this year? So, this year you are also obtaining two coherent sources, but not by division of um, uh, wavefront, rather by division of amplitude. Means it has been shown that if the amplitude of the wave is divided into two, the two rays will be coherent and they lead to or they can lead to the interference of light and this amplitude can be divided using thin film. So, basically in wave optics you will be learning thin films. So, what is thin film? So, thin film is a any transparent media, it is a layer of any transparent medium having thickness approximately equals to 0.5 micrometer that is an average wavelength of visible light. Then how it leads to the interference and what are their practical applications since it is in applied physics. So, that we will come to know when we will start with this doctor wave optics. Okay. Then the next unit is electron ballistics, electron ballistics. Now, what is electron ballistics? So, first let us know what is ballistics. So, ballastics come from the Greek word ballast. What was ballast? So, ballast, the Greek, they invented this ancient Greeks. During wars, they used to 
throw certain rocks on the enemies during war by certain machines they called it as ballast so ballast used to throw the rocks over the enemies so what is ballistics so ballistics is the study of the object after being thrown and you know that when after is after object is thrown or it is fired it is called as projectile motion so it is basically the study of projectile motion rather when object is thrown it follows projectile motion so the path followed by it is called as trajectory so in short i can say ballistics is the study of the trajectories of an object after being thrown now which object we are going to study which is in motion here so in this unit we will be studying electron ballistics means electrons when they are fired they moves in certain paths so in this chapter you will be learning how the electron moves and how the path of electron can be affected now obviously the question in your mind must be that electron is it visible no obviously not we cannot see electron then how we can study its path or how it can study its motion whether it is moving and how it is moving so, so that is the magic of science that is the science or physics so what even if the electrons we are not able to see till we here with the help of mathematics can explain how it is moving when it will be moving after particular time where it will be with what kind of energy it will be and how much time it will take to get that particular speed or that particular energy everything we can calculate about in electron just using certain mathematical calculation and this not only calculation the basis of this calculation we had devised certain devices or certain applications the tv the cathode ray tube is one of the example of that particular field that is electron ballistics that comes under the third unit that is electron optics now look at the two words as i said electron optics as i said optics is a branch of physics which deals with the study of light or phenomena related with light but here i am saying it's electron ballistics the electron has nothing to do with the phenomena related with light why no this why two words are combined electron optics so what in next uh, sorry uh, first second chapter you will come to know when electron moves the beam of electron when it is moving it's it is moving just like a ray of light or the beam of beam of electron when it moves it shows more closeness to the motion of light or movement of light ray of light then if it is like a ray of light then we know that in optics we have converged the ray of light using lenses so if electron beam can behave as a light wave we should be able to converge that electron beam and if we should be able to converge that electron beam then that device which is converging must be a lens rather it will be a electron lens and if we get the lens we know that by using lenses we have designed many devices like microscope so we should be able to devise such a device called as electron microscope yes we have designed it we have a device called electron microscope and that is used to study the structure of the atoms the structure of the materials now that is called scanning electron microscope so basically it's a, a good practical example or practical application of electron ballistics that comes under electron optics why again electron optics i'm telling you by using this electron beam as i said we have devised a cathode ray tube further this cathode ray tubes is nothing but a cro cathode ray oscilloscope which is used in various applications in electronic application and then extending to this we have devised tv the initial tvs that works on crt that is cathode ray tube nowadays we are having lcds and leds that is different uh, concept from this electron optics but it was the first tv which was working on this electron ballistics so in this chapter we will be seeing the applications of this then certain particle accelerators will be there like cyclotron that also we'll see in this chapter the cyclotron you know it's a particle accelerator it can accelerate particle like protons or heavy particles like helium and it 
imparts energy to him so that it can be bombarded on other nuclei to further exper uh, for the further experimental work then also a benbridge mass spectrograph will be included in that then the last one the fourth chapter rather i'll say it is optical fiber now what is optical fiber and nano science it is also including that nano science so basically it consists of two different topics optical fiber and nano science so what optical fiber includes so you know that light can be guided through certain materials like water or as say suppose fountain you have might have seen so colorful fountains you can see that color which is incident on the water this water uh, ray or sorry so what is water it will carry the light up to the end so light can be guided to certain materials like fibers also having greater index, uh, refractive index than the air so we are able to send light through such wires which are of fibers or glasses having diameters of few micrometers so we can send the data any like audio video in the form of light through that so in this chapter we will see how the data can be transferred using optical fibers then its technology and then its application where we are using right now how other traditional communication sources has been replaced by this optical fibers and what are the benefits or advantages of doing that and then obviously last one is nano science you must have listened the word nano science because recently a huge research is going on in this field nano what is mean by a nano so nano is basically a unit of a dimension like length distance nano means 10 to the power minus 9 meter 10 to the power minus 9 meter so any material having its one dimension in nano scale is termed as nano material so here we will come to know that the materials the bulk materials when developed at a nano scale shockingly they shows some different behavior so we will come to know here that when particular materials has been synthesized at the nano scale they will be showing different properties and in different manner so the different or huge research is being carried out in this particular nano science so here we'll see what is nano science how nano materials can be synthesized that can be also um, in that is also included in this chapter then their application disadvantages as well as advantages so this is all about all the eight units in entire year in applied physics so in first semester i told it is called engineering physics and in second semester it will be called as advanced physics so to start with initially being in first semester we will be starting with engineering physics and the first chapter that is quantum mechanics now what is quantum mechanics and how the concept of quantum mechanics evolved so basically directly starting the quantum mechanics we just have to first see the history of the particular quantum mechanics means how it leads to develop uh, for the development of quantum mechanics so basically the quantum mechanics development started from the concept of radiation radiation as we know is a wave rather light visible light we have studied it was it is an radiation electromagnet now we know but how the concept of light was evolved do we know initially that it was an electromagnetic wave or it consists of photons now i know or now we know like that no so if we go to the base if we go to the starting the light was no more photon or no more electromagnetic waves the first concept towards light as a wave was introduced by hygins hygins you know it's very famous hygins wave theory of light 
So, Isaacs put forward that light must be traveling in the form of wave, in the form of crest and trough or in the form of wave fronts. The concept was introduced by Isaacs and this wave front or each point on the wave front will act as a secondary source of light emitting secondary wavelets in all possible directions. So, how this will lead to the propagation of the light? It was just like a stone dropped in a steady water. You know, when the stone is dropped in the steady water, it will form the ripples and they get advanced away from the center where you drop the stone. Likewise, when light will be on in particular medium, so what the medium will get disturbed and that waves in the form of wave fronts will travel in all possible directions. So, this was concept of hygiene, but hygiene did not tell which wave it is, but light is a wave and on the basis of its concept of wave front and the wave theory, he proved the phenomenons like reflection of light, refraction of light, which was quite true and it was believed that yes, light must be a wave, but the question arises again, which wave? That was still a mystery and that continues and it was in 1670s around. So, it continues up to 1800. Then the year 1806, we know a very good experiment took place as I already told you that is Young's double slit experiment that is interference of light. So, by that experiment Young proved that light must be a wave, it consists of crest and trough and then there are conditions for constructive and destructive interference and all this can be proved. Meanwhile, the various phenomena like diffraction, dispersion interference scattering were proved by considering light as a wave. So, light was considered fully as a wave, but again question remains same which wave? Is it a mechanical wave? Because mechanical waves require certain medium to propagate, but light propagates through the vacuum. Then if it is not a mechanical wave, which wave it should be? Then the answer was given by Maxwell. We know that Maxwell was working on electromagnetism, electromagnetism. So, we know famous equations Maxwell's four equations. So, Maxwell theoretically proved that light must be an electromagnetic wave traveling with the speed c that is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second huge speed as you can see. So, light must be traveling with this much speed and since it is composed of electric and magnetic field, they will lead to develop itself because we all know that changing electric field can produce magnetic field and changing magnetic field can produce electric field. So, these two fields will lead to develop themselves and they do not require any medium for propagation. So, light can propagate through the vacuum. So, it was around 1854. So, here we came to know that light rather radiation it consists of electromagnetic radiations and we here came to know across all the spectrum of electromagnetic radiations like starting from gamma rays with lower wavelength or rather higher frequencies up to the radio waves with higher wavelengths or say suppose lower frequency. So, entire spectrum like gamma rays, x rays, ultraviolet, visible light, infrared, microwave, radio waves and all that and then it was found that these are all electromagnetic radiation and their wavelength we also can determine. Then it was assumed that during 1860-70 that radiation is fully wave, confirm it is a wave and the concepts about radiation has been now totally sorted out and it has been considered to be a wave. But during the same time in late 80s like 1880s in 19th century, there were two phenomenons many phenomena there were, but two phenomena they were making or creating problems dealing with this concept of radiation with wave. Which were they? You must have studied them. One was the black body radiation and the second was that you have studied I am talking the photoelectric effect. So, black body as you know it is a perfectly black body if you have devised, it can absorb all kind of radiation fall on it and if it is heated to a certain temperature, it can emit 
how kind of waste irradiation that it has emitted. So, that was one a troublesome concept and the second was the photoelectric effect. So, in photoelectric effect what you have studied? When a particular metal it has been illuminated by a light of certain frequency, then it can emit electrons. So, that are called as photoelectrons and the photo current will be getting. So, the outcomes or the observations of this particular phenomenon, two phenomena rather lead to some calculations and that cannot be the out observations cannot be at all explained with the help of classical theory. So, the theory needs to be changed, the concept of radiation needs to be changed and that was done by Max Planck in 1900. So, that is called Planck's hypothesis. So, the Planck's hypothesis regarding photons. So, you must have learned that Planck during explanation of black body is told that that the radiation that that particular atoms or molecules of the material work as a harmonic oscillators and the radiation is not continuous rather radiation will be emitted in the form of certain packets of energy, certain bundle of energy and in each bundle or each packet of energy is called as quanta and here the word or birth to the word quanta takes place. So, the quanta and each quanta possesses certain energy E equals to H nu, where H is Planck's constant which value is 6.63 into 10 to the power minus 34 joule seconds and nu is the frequency of that radiation. So, the frequency oh sorry the energy is discrete not continuous and it is emitted in certain packets of or bundles called as quanta or quantum and here is the birth of quantum mechanics. So, Planck successfully explained the black body radiation on the basis of his theory called as Planck's quantum theory. But again, it was limited up to only the black body and scientists they thought that it is only applicable for that and there is no such um, wide scope for this particular theory. But during the same time in 1990, uh, 80, sorry, 1890, Hertz, he discovered certain phenomenon called as photoelectric effect that was remain un unexplained certain metal when it is illuminated by certain radiation of certain frequency greater than threshold, it emits photoelectron. Now, what is responsible for that? And the phenomenon has certain observation like it was instantaneous phenomenon. Secondly, as intensity of light increases, the current that photo current should increase and as the frequency of light increases, the kinetic energy increases. Now, all these phenomenons or observations the classical theory failed to explain because according to classical theory when intensity changes current should not change or increase and when frequency increases the kinetic energy should not increase and also it fails to explain why the phenomenon is instantaneous. So, in 1905 Einstein Albert Einstein used Planck's theory of quantum nature and he applied this theory to this concept of photoelectric effect and successfully explained the photoelectric effect for which he has got the Nobel Prize for the explanation of photoelectric effect using Planck's theory. So, Einstein termed this quanta in generalized way as a photon and here comes the birth of photon and the entire further quantum mechanics works on this concepts of radiations and dual nature of it radiation. So, today this is sufficient for this particular the history of say suppose classical physics. So, how it lead to quantum mechanics. So, these two phenomena are listed here one is black body radiation and other is the photoelectric effect the leads to the birth of quantum mechanics. But Moreover, there are many phenomena that cannot be explained with the help of black, uh, sorry, uh, the wave theory of light. One of that experiment is Compton effect. 
So, our next topic is Compton effect. So, the first topic of your syllabus that is Compton effect. So, in next class, we will see what is Compton effect. So, for today, it is okay, it is over. Thank you, thank you all.